Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 6th May 2022. Right now, I am with the 11th Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is Physics 5054. Today, we have set our heart to solve a uh, ATP paper. We call it alternative to practical. We also call it paper four. And we have selected October, November 2013, a 4-1 paper. This paper four or this ATP paper belongs from the zone one. The time allowed for this paper is one hour. So let's start this paper. So here we go. The question paper is coming up on your screen. So October, November 2013, 4 1 paper. This paper four is from the zone one. So the first question coming up on your screen. A student investigates a wooden sphere rolling down a plastic channel and falling to the floor. The channel is set up at the end of a bench. The sphere is initially held in the channel at the position shown in the figure 1.1. On the figure, mark and label the height h of the sphere above the bench before it is released. So from here till this bench, I will. Uh, I will draw a line here, okay? So let me show you. So here you can see I have drawn that line. Okay, so the next part. He said, describe how the student measures, ensures that the sphere is released from the same point each time. So from the ramp, if you want to release the sphere from the same point every time you release it, you can use a marker and make a mark on the ramp. So once that, every time you release this sphere, you will release it from that point. So very simple and straightforward question. Okay. So student can use a marker to make a mark on the ramp. And from that mark, you can release the sphere every time. Okay. The sphere is released, rolls down the channel and lands on the floor. When the sphere leaves the, uh, when the sphere, uh, when the sphere leaves the end of the channel, it is traveling horizontally. On the figure 1.1, draw a possible path of the sphere after it leaves the channel and until it hits the floor. Mark and label the horizontal distance D traveled by the sphere after it leaves the channel and until it hits the floor. So it's a B part. So let me show you my answer. So it will go a little straight and then it comes down. So it will touch the floor here. So this is that path which we were supposed to make. And from here till here, it has traveled the horizontal distance. So I have labeled it as D. Hopefully you understand. Okay. So then he says, uh, suggest a method for finding the point where the sphere hits the floor. There can be two, three methods. One method is uh, you take uh, a candle and you, you give the smoke to the ball. So there will be a layer of the tar on the ball. So when you will release the ball, Wherever the ball will hit the floor, there will be a black mark. Another method can be you can put a, you can put a tray on the floor and put some sand in it. So wherever the, the sphere will hit the, hit the floor, so because you have put sand, you have put a tray and a sand in it, so there will be a dent in the sand. And you will know the exact position where the sphere has landed. So uh, let me show you my answers. So put a tray of sand on the floor where sphere will land, a mark will be made in the sand. So very simple. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. He says, vertical arrow line by eye from the bench to the sphere, sensible, so for example, mark on the track, correct shaped path drawn from end of the channel to the floor, horizontal arrow line from end of the channel to where the candidates line meet the floor. Any sensible suggestion, for example, sphere lands in the tray of sand mark made on the floor. 
use of the second person clearly explained or paint or stain on the street to leave the mark on the floor. So this is the marking scheme. Okay, so he says, uh, with the age set at 30 centimeter, the student repeats the experiment and measures the D six times. The student obtains the following values of the D in the centimeter. So at this 68.5, 64, 67, 66.565 and 64.5. Calculate the average distance D average, give your answer to a suitable number of the significant figure. So if you want to find the D average, the method is very simple. You simply add these all the, these six values and you divide them uh, with the six. Okay. So uh, I will add them. So 68.5 plus 64 plus 67 plus. Sixty-six point five plus sixty-five plus sixty-four sixty-six a centimeter. Okay, then the student. Uh, then they say, let's check. Sixty-six is the right answer, sir. Then he says uh, the student repeats the experiment different values of age. The results obtained for age and D average are recorded in the figure one point two. On the figure one point two, write your value for the D average from the D. So sixty-six will be written here. So here you will write. 66 let me show you i have written it so 66 will be written here okay now uh the next thing which they are asking is by considering the experimental arrangement suggests with the reason whether d average is equals to zero when h is equals to zero so uh, when the h the height of the ball above the bench will be zero so there will be no uh, horizontal component of the velocity in the ball so the D will be automatically zero. The, the, the horizontal distance is covered by the ball because the ball has some, uh, some um, horizontal velocity in it. Okay, so the velocity has two components. One is the vertical component, one, the other is the horizontal component. So because you have not released it from a height, so there will be no horizontal component. So that's why the D average will be zero. So our answer is, if H is equal to zero, there will be no horizontal component of the velocity, so the D average will be zero. So the horizontal distance traveled will be also zero. So let's look at the marking scheme. Yeah, yes, uh, suggestions, for example, no horizontal velocity falls straight down, sensible suggestion, for example, systematic and explained size of the sphere, and X is way around labeled. Okay, so then we have, this question is going further, okay. Okay, on the next page, he says on the figure 1.3, he says on the figure 1.3, plot the graph of the D average on the y-axis against the H in the centimeters on the x-axis. Start your axis from the origin, draw a smooth curve of the best fit. So we have to draw, you see, this is the table. This is the values for the x-axis and these are the values for the y-axis. So we will draw this. So the first thing, this is the table, sir. This is this is going from two to 30 and this is going from 14 to 66. Okay, so let me show you. The first thing which we will do, we will uh, label the axis. So if you want to label the axis on the X axis, I will write H in the centimeters and I will write D average in centimeters. So then, I will fill, uh, I will put the scale, uh, I will mark the scale. So, uh, because this is going to 30, so it will be 5, 10, 30, uh, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Then I will plot these points 2, 14, 5, 22, 10, 33, 15, 45, 20, 54, 25, 60, 30, 66. So these are the coordinates and you can see I have plotted these points here. Then I, ha I have joined them with a smooth curve, smooth curve of the best fit. I hope you can understand this. He says another student suggests that the D average is directly proportional to the H. Use your graph to explain whether this student is correct. This student is wrong. The D average is not directly proportional to the H because the graph of the two quantities which are directly proportional to each other is a straight line and that passes through the origin. And the, 
the two quantities, the two quantities are directly proportional to each other. Their graph is a straight line and it passes through the region. This graph is not a straight line and it is not passing through the origin. Right now, it's not passing through the origin. So, uh, let me show you the marking scheme. He says, okay. Line not straight, okay. So our answer is right. Okay, sir, we are going to the next question. A group of students investigate their reaction times. The students mark a 30 centimeter strip of card in equal sections as shown in the figure. So they, these are equal sections, it's a 30 centimeter long strip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Each, each portion is three centimeter. A student, student A holds the card at one end of, uh, so that it is it hangs vertically. Student B holds his thumb and first finger between about two centimeter apart, just below the lower end of the card as shown in the figure. So this student is holding it. This student's fingers are open. So when it, he will release this, the A will release it. The B will try to catch it between its fingers, finger and the thumb. Okay, so so we will see at which number he catches. The smaller the number, it means its reaction time is very small. He's very quick. If he catches it at a larger number, it means its reaction time is larger. It means that he's slow. Student A released the card. Student B catches the card between his thumb and first finger without moving his hand up or down. Several pairs of students perform the experiment. Explain what happens if the student B is not concentrating. If this student B, who is supposed to catch it, if he is not concentrating, he will he will catch uh, uh, it at a larger number. So it will give a uh, that it will it will give a longer reaction time. It will show that his reaction time is very long. Okay. So let me show you my answer. It says. Uh, Okay, reaction time will increase and card falls further before he catches it. Okay, so next part. State how the card shows which student has the shortest reaction time. The shortest reaction time means the student B will be very quick and he will catch the uh, that strip at a smaller number. Like he can catch it at one, he can catch it at two, and he can catch it at three. So. So here we go. Student who, who catches the card from the smallest number have the shortest reaction time. Okay. Then he says at uh, the distance H in centimeters fallen by the card in the time T in the second is given by H is equals to 500 T square. Calculate the H for the T equals to 0 0.1. Very simple question in the place of the T put 0 0.1. So uh, let me show you. I have done this calculation. So here, here we go. 500 multiply bracket start 0 0.1 bracket close square equals to. So the answer will be five centimeter. So he will he will catch the that thing has moved five centimeter. Then let's check the marking scheme. You can see the marking scheme. So our answers are right. Okay, then the question is, a student catches the card after it has fallen 15 centimeter, calculate its reaction time. You will use this formula, H value is 15, and we will try to find out the T value. So it's H equals to 500 T square, 15 equals to 500 T square. So uh, 15 divided by 500 equals to and then I will take the square root on both the side. So the final answer will be T equals to 0 0.17. So 0 0.17 seconds. So his reaction time is 0 0.17 seconds. 0 0.17 seconds. Second is the right answer, sir. A student, uh, a teacher draws lines on the back of the car to calibrate it so that the student can measure reaction time directly in seconds. Explain what in this case is meant by calibrate. So calibrate here means at the back of the that strip, 
we will put lines which will correspond to different reaction times. Okay, so we'll mark lines on the back of that strip, which will be actually representing that uh, the a certain reaction time, if a student has a certain reaction, he will catch it from here. Lines marked on the back of card will show reaction time. So that is calibration. Mark time and position on the card. Time and position on the card. Okay. And then the question is on the figure 2.3, without further calculation, sketch the card calibrated by the teacher. You may use answer from the B second part. Okay. So if the reaction time is 0 0.1 second, they have, they have used this. And uh, let me show you. If the 15 centimeter will be H if the reaction time is 0 0.17. So, you see, um, if the reaction time is 0 0.1 second, it means uh, the H will be 5 centimeter. And I have measured it. I have measured this length of the strip. It is 2.5 centimeter. So for 5 centimeter on the strip, it is 2.5 centimeter. So when the reaction time is 0 0.17 sec second, the H value is 15 centimeter. So how much will be length on this strip? For five, it is 2.5. For 15, it will be 7.5. So from here at the distance of 7.5, I will put a mark. Okay? So one mark is enough. I have done the calculations for others also. And so you can see this. Let me check. So our answer is right. So we are moving to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number three. A student starts experiment to determine the path of light through a glass block. The student uses a rectangular glass block and optical pins. He places the glass block on a sheet of paper on a soft board as shown in the figure 3.1. The student draws a line L to represent an incident ray. On the figure 3.1, draw the normal at the point where L meets the glass block. Okay, so this is that diagram. So L meets the glass block here. So put a protector here, mark the 90 degree and draw the line that will be the normal. So I've done this, let me show you. So here you can see I have drawn the normal. This makes 90 degree angle with the surface of the glass. Okay, so I will uh, then, then what does he say? He says on the figure 3.1, label the angle of incidence uh, I and measure the I. So I will have, I have labeled this as I and I have measured it with the protector and that is 42 degrees. The student then places a pin P1 on the incident ray as shown in the figure 3.1. So just a reason why the student uses a board under the piece of the paper. We put the board under the paper so that the the pins can be fixed on the paper easily. The board is used so that the pin can easily inserted and could stand firm on the paper. The student places the second pin P2 on the L suggests where on the L pin two should be placed. Pin should be at least five centimeter from the pin one. So from here, it should be at least five centimeter on the line L. Hopefully you understand. Then he says to find the path of the emergent ray, the student views the P1 and the P2 through the P2 through the glass block. He moves his head until the P1 and the P2 are in the line. Explain why it is important for the pins to be vertical. Because you see, uh, when you look from the other side, uh, you try to align the pin three and the pin four 
or the other pins uh, with the image of the pin one and the pin two. So it is very important to for the pins to be vertical so they can be aligned. We have to go on the other side. We have to see the image of the pin one and pin two, and then we will align pin three and pin four on the other side with their images. So they should be vertical. If they are not vertical, one pin will be going this way. The other pin will be might be going to that way. Okay, then he says the student finds it is difficult. The student find it is difficult to mark the emergent ray with the apparatus as it is set up in the figure 3.1. Suggest and explain on the for this reason. You see the light, the emergent ray will be coming here. The emergent ray will be here. So here the, the paper is, there is no space because the, the board will finish here. So there is no space for the pin. Okay, pin three, I can put here, but pin four, for pin four, there is no place on the paper because this block is on the edge. Block is near the edge of the paper and the board. So the emergent ray will be uh, short on the paper. So putting pins five centimeter apart on the emergent ray will be not possible. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. So this, so here is the marking scheme of the question number three showing up on your screen. So you can pause the video and you can take your time and you can read these marking schemes. I have already checked my answers with this marking scheme. Okay, so we are going to the next question. He says, describe an experiment to measure the resistance of a resistor using an ammeter and a voltmeter. Your account should include a circuit diagram, a reading, the readings taken, a method of taking a range of readings, a method of determining the resistance from the readings. So it's a four mark question and then the B party describe one way to improve the accuracy of the result. Okay, so let me show you. So, uh, so here you can see I have drawn a circuit, cell, switch, ammeter, then we have used a variable resistor. And then this is that fixed resistor whose resistance we want to find out. Parallel to this, we have put a voltmeter and that's the circuit. Okay, so what I will do, I will close the circuit. I will note down what is the reading on the ammeter and what is the reading on the voltmeter. And then I will divide the voltmeter reading with the ammeter reading and that will give me the resistance. Then I will immediately open the switch and then I will change the resistance of that this variable resistor. Then I will close it. Then I will take this reading again on the ammeter and the voltmeter. I will divide the voltmeter reading with the ammeter reading and that will give me the resistance. And then I can take the average or I can take more readings and find the resistance uh, two times, three times, and then I can take the average of the resistance. You see, uh, it's a four mark question. So listen carefully, close the switch. Okay, close the switch, note reading on ammeter and the voltmeter, use the formula R is equals to V by I to calculate the resistance of the resistor, change the resistance of the variable resistor, and again, note the values of the current and the potential drop and calculate the R, take the average of the R. Then their question is describe one way to improve the accuracy of the result. Uh, you can see, you can get more accurate results that whenever you have taken the reading immediately switch off the current. Because if you keep the sweet current switch on, switch on and due to the flow of the current, the resistor will become hot. When it becomes hot, its resistance might, might change or the resistance of the, the connecting wires might change. Switch of the current between the readings and changing resistance of variable resistor. So whenever you are, you switch off the current and then you change the readings, okay? Whenever you are supposed to change the variable resistor's resistance, switch off the current. Okay, don't keep the current on. So let me show you the more, okay. So my dear students, uh, the the reading is uh, the, the answers of this question number four. They are showing up on your screen and I have already checked my answer uh, with this marking scheme. You can stop this video, pause this video and read this marking scheme very carefully. 
So I, I always tell you that it's very important habit to check the answers given by your teacher, by your mentor, by your instructor, by me. Uh, check this, those answers, compare them with the markers here. So very, very important habit and key to success. So uh, that was the last question on our paper. So my dear students, today we have done October, November, 2013, physics 505441 paper, this ATP paper, this paper four, this alternative to practical paper belongs from the zone one and we have completed it. I have tried my best to explain you the concepts. So I hope that this video will help you. This will help you improve your physics concepts and prepare yourself uh, for the ATP paper. So thank you very much, everyone. Don't forget to uh, subscribe my channel, share the link of this video uh, with your friends, especially with your junior students. So it's a blessing for me to teach you online. Thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless you all.